Okay, I think that we can probably start now. Um, so hello everyone, thank you very much for joining today. Um, this presentation, we were going to have it before at Argon, but then um, it was in the middle of supercomputing and LLVM developers meeting and, and many other things. So we decided past Kevin's end of, uh, past end of Kevin's appointment, um, so this will just summarize a little bit of the some of the work that Kevin did as an intern at Argon. Um, so for those that are just joining for for the sake of looking at the presentation, Kevin uh, is a student from uh, Barcelona Supercomputing that did an internship at Argon that lasted around three to four months, um, I believe. Yeah. Uh, this was just some of the work that he did uh, together with the. Uh, of the next generation um, plugin, or not the creation, but the completion of the next generation plugin. Um, Johannes, if, if you have something to say or you just want to add something, let me know. Otherwise, I'll just give the floor to Kevin. Yeah, let, let Kevin give his presentation. It sounds like a plan. Okay. Thank you for the presentation, Jose. Uh, so, well, as Jose said, I'm hearing from the VSC and I was between three and four months in Argon. And I was working on unifying LLVM OpenMP of load across the GPU vendors that it supports and adding also uh, the asynchronous operations on AMD accelerators for LLVM OpenMP. So I will give very short uh, um, explanation of why we need the uh, OpenMP offload. Uh, as we can see in the current and future uh, HPC systems, we will keep uh, seeing uh, multiple GPUs per node. And this one being the main source of computational sources in, in these systems. Uh, we can see the, these in the upcoming and the already being installed uh, exascale systems in the US and with very different uh, kind of uh, GPU uh, vendors. Uh, the problem with this is that uh, we have uh, different vendor specific programming models that are being tried to solve by these uh, vendors. And uh, here uh, comes the problem of uh, having, of using uh, programming models in the applications. We will have applications with multiple programming models for offloading the, the code to the GPUs. And that uh, can uh, damage a lot the portability of the applications and also the, the code uh, itself. So here it comes the OpenMP target, which is uh, in, uh, in the OpenMP standard for several years. And it defines directive for offloading application code to the accelerators. With this, we can achieve uh, same application code without uh, vendor specific calls and having also a standardized behavior among the different GPU platforms. Although obviously there are some uh, implementation defined uh, behaviors. Uh, also with that, uh, we can use in the OpenMP runtime side, uh, we can use the vendor specific uh, low level APIs. That should be the most efficient ones for uh, offloading code to the corresponding uh, GPUs. I will not go into much of a detail of what OpenMP target uh, provides, uh, but it's uh, part of the OpenMP standard and it provides several uh, directive for uh, creating uh, data environments on the devices from the host side. Also for sending, retrieving data in that environment, updating the data, and also running uh, target code regions uh, on the devices using the, the data environments that are on those devices. So one of the most important implementations of OpenMP is the LLVM OpenMP. Uh, this one also supports the target of loading. And in the runtime side of LLVM OpenMP for target of loading, we find two main components. First, we find the LipoMP target uh, library, and then we find some uh, vendor-specific plugins uh, that uh, work uh, calling to directly the, the vendor-specific APIs like uh, CUDA or HSA uh, of AMD. 
And the main task of Lipoint P target is basically it implements the behavior specified through uh, the OpenMP target directive that the user put in the application code. It also orchestrates the data movement and running of the target region, regions, like uh, for example, the, the kernels. And it, uh, as I said, it communicates with the vendor specific uh, plugins uh, using a common API. These plugins are uh, they are responsible for managing uh, the devices of that vendor, uh, loading the vendor specific images into the device prior to execute uh, any kernel on that device, uh, launching the kernels itself, issuing memory transfers, and also uh, it should add the support for the asynchronicity of these two uh, previous operations. That uh, synchronicity is optional. The plugin can actually decide if it wants to implement, implement it or not. But the LiPo MP target is prepared for exploiting this asynchronicity of the operations that will be issued. For example, the launching of kernels and the issuing of uh, memory transfers. As I said, the LiPo MP target, uh, target calls uh, common API functions uh, that the plugins should uh, implement. Uh, for instance, uh, we can see here the first one to initialize a specific device. And we see here uh, other three that are uh, uh, operations. We can see data submit, uh, data retrieve. Uh, the data summit is for sending data from the host to the device, the specific device and a specific uh, buffer. And the retrieve is the opposite uh, operation. Then we have the third operation, which is the run target uh, that will run a target uh, region uh, kernel in a specific device. As you can see here, uh, the last parameters of this, uh, this function also, the, the name of this function uh, already says that they are asynchronous. The plugin, as I said, can decide if it's actually asynchronous. And we see here a, a pointer of uh, async info uh, in all these operations that uh, this pointer is basically encapsulates a plugin specific uh, stream or queue of uh, asynchronous uh, operations. And what it does is, for example, uh, in case it's implemented as asynchronous, the data submit is just uh, issued as a, an asynchronous operation and is put into the, the stream at the end of the stream. It's more or less, it works as uh, we should, it, it operates as uh, the CUDA streams. Finally, uh, we have also the API function in, in this slide that is for synchronizing a stream and waiting uh, until all the operations on the stream have finished. But there are some issues at the plugin level. Uh, first of all, uh, the plugins present different features and optimizations. Uh, we can get different performance depending on the platform. And it's not actually only because of the, the hardware, but also uh, about the features and optimizations that are implemented in each of the plugins. For instance, the AMD GPU plugin can perform poorly in some cases because that plugin doesn't implement the uh, synchronicity of uh, operations that we were seeing uh, before. Uh, also adding, uh, since since the, the implementations in, in all the plugins are um, completely separated, uh, at the end, each plugin has been implemented uh, uh, quite differently. And adding a new plugin is just duplicating a lot of code and a lot of logic that could be put into common. Because at the end, these plugins uh, uh, can uh, share a, a lot of uh, uh, common structure and logic. It's also very tedious to the genetic features to these plugins, basically because uh, you have to go to one of, of each of them and add the same uh, feature, but probably in a different way because they, these plugins are implemented very differently. 
In this table, I also show the differences in the features that are supported in the main uh, plugins of uh, LLVM OpenMP. We can see that the CUDA plugin is uh, supporting asynchronous operations because they have the native uh, CUDA streams, but the problem is that the AMD doesn't implement that and everything is uh, synchronous. Then there is also a memory manager in the CUDA plugin that uh, reuses the device data allocations and tries to avoid uh, uh, to constantly uh, allocating uh, buffers for, for the devices. That's imp an important feature. We have seen some application having a difference in performance about eight, 10% uh, because of not having uh, the memory manager. There is an all, another uh, feature that is supported in this case in AMD, but is not supported in CUDA. Uh, it's the one that uh, we can read uh, global variables from the ELF image. The ELF image is in the memory of the process. And then the plugin, loads that image into the, all the devices that will run kernels of that, uh, that are uh, belonging to that um, image. Uh, the AMD, what it does instead of loading the image into the, de the device and reading uh, a global variable from the device, what it does is just um, detects where the global variables are in the ELF image, which is in the uh, memory of the process and then just copies using a host-to-host -host, uh, copy, uh, a mem copy, a uh, normal mem copy. And that uh, um, allows to um, reduce the number of uh, device transfers. Finally, there is the last uh, feature, which is uh, copies uh, with host uh, pinet uh, memory. Uh, in CUDA uh, plugin, that is not taken into account. So that is left to the CUDA uh, runtime system that uh, will perform the necessary steps in order to use uh, host uh, pinet memory and an intermediate buffer for that. In the case of the AMD GPU, that is suited, but the problem is that those transfers are synchronous from the point of view of lib OMP target. So the first step in this work was to uh, unify uh, the plugin uh, infrastructure into a new one. Uh, we unify the plugin code into the next gen uh, plugins and we have a common code logic uh, that is implemented into uh, generic interfaces using C++ uh, classes. These generic classes uh, will implement the most common logic and then the plugins uh, can define their own uh, classes for the different entities inside the plugin. For example, the device, the plugin itself, uh, the kernel uh, classes, etc. And we'll have to inherit from the generic classes and implement the plugin specific functionalities. With this, the new, adding a new plugin shouldn't be uh, as tedious as before. And we have moved also um, most of the features and optimizations into the generic side. For example, uh, now uh, with uh, additional, with no additional effort, we have uh, all the plugins working with the memory manager for using memory locations and all plugins uh, reading from global variables uh, reading global variables from the ELF image uh, directly. And the last step that will be in the explain in the next section is was to extend the AMD GPU plugin to provide the synchronicity in their operations. That is uh, that was critical to be competitive with the CUDA plugin. Uh, and in order to do that, we need the concept of a stream that we have seen the API between LiPoMP target and the plugins. 
basically the availability right now on LLVM upstream is that uh, we have the common plugin infrastructure and the CUDA plugin already working into uh, LLVM upstream. So you can to, to run it. And also the MDHBO plugin is with, with the streams is already under review on that link. And for enabling these uh, plugins, you can do it at uh, runtime, uh, just defining the to one this uh, environment variable. The idea is that we have uh, this generic part uh, with different classes for each of the entities. Uh, for example, we have classes for the plugin, for the device, the memory manager, steam manager, the, the global handler for reading uh, globals uh, from the elf image. And then each plugin has to define uh, their uh, own um, classes if necessary, uh, specifying the uh, plugin specific um, functionalities that are not common. The next section, uh, well, the next step was to provide a synchronicity in the operations of the AMD GPU plugin. So let's see first uh, what AMD is providing. Uh, AMD is uh, implementing the heterogeneous system architecture API or HSA API for loading to their uh, GPUs and they provide also several extensions. The problem here is that, well, the concept of a stream as we know in, in CUDA doesn't exist here but the API provides uh, asynchronous operations and we can define input and output dependencies between these asynchronous operations. And we can uh, put one, uh, run one after the other uh, defining these dependencies. The API also allows creating uh, the multiple command queues uh, per device. Uh, these queues are used to enqueue the kernel launch packets these packets basically are kernel launch descriptors where we can find a pointer to the kernel arguments. We can find a, a, the function, a pointer to, well, a pointer to the function that uh, has to be executed as a kernel, etc. cetera. Uh, once we push these packets into the, the queue, the command queue, uh, eventually the runtime of HSCA we'll see these uh, packets and we'll process them uh, in FIFO order. The idea is that they launch the kernels in, in FIFO order, but they don't guarantee any uh, completion order. Uh, the question here is, uh, can we use directly these uh, command queues as streams? No, we cannot use because one thing is that uh, only the launch order is guaranteed and it's not enough for implemented uh, our concept of a stream. No? And the second thing is that uh, the asynchronous memory copies don't go through the, the queue. It doesn't follow the, that path. Basically, uh, they provide a function called HSA memcopy async uh, with, uh, with where we can specify exactly the input and output dependencies of these uh, operations. Then the API also uh, provides uh, signals uh, that are used for defining the dependencies within asynchronous operation. Uh, for example, an asynchronous operation can define, can define an input and output uh, signal. And then another operation can define an input uh, signal on the, the output signal of the previous operation and this will become a dependent uh, operation. They will run one after the other. These signals are actually uh, integer uh, variables uh, that are operated uh, atomically. And when we say that these signals are signaled, are, mm, the meaning is that they are modified uh, uh, atomically. For instance, if uh, an asynchronous operation defines an output uh, def uh, dependency on a signal, this means that once the operation finalizes, 
the HSAA runtime will fulfill the output signal and may trigger the start of a dependent uh, operation that was uh, waiting on that signal. So with all this, we can simulate the streams. We can chain uh, the, kern the kernel launches and uh, the synchronous memory copies using these uh, input and output signals. For example, as we can see in the figure uh, in the slide, there are four different signals. Uh, we have four different operations that we run. We want to run one after the other as if it was a stream. So we would start with the mem copy async, uh, setting the output de dependency on the signal four, and then the first kernel packet will uh, set an input uh, dependency on the same signal. And this will become a, a, dependent, a dependent operation. And that works for the rest of the operations. Some challenges for before implementing the streams. Uh, one of the things is that uh, in the case of the AMD, uh, the AMD uh, API, uh, the kernel arguments uh, when we launch a kernel must be placed in special memory buffers. They cannot be on the stack of the thread that is. Uh, uh, putting the kernel launch packet into the queue. Uh, basically, the packet has, as I said, has a pointer field for setting the kernel arguments. And we uh, are responsible for making these uh, arguments uh, alive till the kernel finishes. That is quite different from the CUDA API, where we can just put the uh, list of of arguments in the stack of the thread that call the CUDA kernel launch. That's something we have to consider. Then we have also the, the, the aspect of uh, having memory copies uh, asynchronous. To be asynchronous, uh, we need the host buffers that will be involved in those uh, memory copies to be pinned memory. It cannot be uh, pageable memory, and it cannot go into the into the disk. Uh, in order, uh, well, the, the thing is that uh, having pinned memory uh, as the host buffer will be critical for getting uh, optim optimal optimal uh, transfer performance. But the thing is that the uh, user applications. Uh, don't allocate, uh, in general, don't allocate uh, pinned memory. Basically, they just uh, malloc or, or new uh, using the new operation uh, to get uh, uh, the um, memory that is not pinned. So we have to consider that, that case and make it uh, efficient. So in order to make it efficient, we will need uh, asynchronous two-step uh, memory copy with an intermediate host pinet buffer that we will uh, manage inside the plugin. The user doesn't see that uh, intermediate uh, pinet buffer. Uh, for instance, in the case of uh, copying from a host buffer to the device buffer, we would need uh, first an asynchronous uh, copy, uh, copying from the non pinet buffer to the pinet buffer, and then a second dependent uh, Asynchronous operation using the uh, HSA uh, API for copying data that will use DMEA uh, from the pinet buffer to the device buffer. Finally, we need also a memory manager for reusing all these uh, intermediate allocators, the kernel arguments, and also the intermediate uh, pinet buffers. Uh, we need that in order to prevent constantly allocating and deallocating these buffers in each uh, operation of, of launching or data copies. Question now is when we can release these intermediate buffers, no? because uh, these operations are, are asynchronous and it's not uh, clear when they, when they are finished and who can release all these uh, temporary 
the seems that the most uh, simplest way is just when the stream is synchronized. When the host thread wants to synchronize it with the stream and wait until all the operations have completed, after waiting all of them, it just uh, goes through the different buffers that we have been using and it will release them to the memory manager. So it can, they can be reused for next uh, asynchronous operations. Um, so the implementation of the custom streams on AMD GPU has been like having, uh, as, as is shown here, is each stream has a vector of uh, signals of HSA uh, API. And that vector is used as a circular buffer. Uh, each of these signals can become the input and output dependency of an asynchronous operation. And we uh, interwind them in order to chain the different operations and make uh, the dependencies between them. There is also extra space uh, to keep track of all the intermediate buffers that must be released and uh, once the operations have finished. And also there is, um, there is a thing that each stream will use a common queue in order to push the kernel launches. Since the number of uh, queues that HSA uh, provides is uh, limited, uh, probably there will be uh, some streams sharing the same queue, but that's not uh, that's not a problem. The operation, the operating of uh, the stream is quite uh, simple. Uh, if we want to push a new asynchronous operation into the stream, we just go to the last valid signal and and we set as uh, input dependency of the new async operation. Then we consume uh, the next uh, signal that will be uh, free available. And we set uh, as the output dependency of the new asynchronous operation. In this way, we, are, we have already changed that operation to the previous operation on the stream. We also can keep track of, of the intermediate buffer uh, in the position if it's actually needed. Then synchronizing with the stream is quite simple. We go to the last uh, valid signal. That is the, the signal used by the last uh, operation push it into the stream. And we just wait until that signal is fulfilled. There are other operations on the stream like uh, synchronizing between different streams, uh, but um, well, I will not go into detail about it about that. There are some preliminary evaluation that we have uh, done. Um, first, we went uh, with the CUDA plugins, uh, comparing the old one with the new one. We have used mini QMC, which is a mini application that simulates the real space quantum Monte Carlo algorithm. And we have uh, used a single uh, a single device for that, uh, an NVIDIA device. Uh, we can see there is no performance uh, penalty between the original one in blue and the red one, in the, the new one in red. Uh, that's the expected um, result because the CUDA plugin, uh, we changed the implementation, but the, there was no new uh, performance optimizations applied to it. So that's uh, good news that there are no performance penalty. We then have switched to the AMD GPU plugin. Uh, in this case, we run a stream uh, benchmark that uses multiple concurrent target tasks and, depend and data dependencies on the, the blocks that they are uh, processing. Uh, and we do not uh, reuse data on the device. Uh, in this way, we put a lot of pressure on the host device, device data transfer, which is uh, what we want to, to, to test also. Uh, 
So here we can see the difference, uh, the original uh, plugin of AMD GPU and in blue. And these three others are the ones uh, with the next gen plugins and with the uh, stream implementation. So the operations actually are, are asynchronous. Uh, we can see there is a huge improvement, at least for these, uh, for these uh, uh, benchmark. And we can see that also um, th these three versions uh, use different number of uh, uh, HSA uh, queues. Uh, the red one is using 64 queues. This one is uh, eight, que eight queues and the green one is using four queues. Uh, we can see that uh, having a high number of queues can damage uh, significantly the performance. So we have set the default number of uh, queues between four and 16. We don't go beyond uh, 16 queues. And this will be the, the now we will be using eight queues uh, in the rest of the experimentation. And well, I wanted also to say that the original one was using four four queues. So the 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 um, comparison is quite fair. And finally, we have evaluated the the same uh, AMD GPU original versus the next gen. But in this case, again, with the mini QMC, we can see that using the full uh, socket, <clears throat> there is also a huge difference between the original and the next gen. This is seconds. So um, this one is quite, uh, the new one is quite better than the old one. Uh, this is a preliminary evaluation. We need more analysis, of course. Uh, but the, pro, the improvements uh, could be due to first, now the operations on the next gen plugin are asynchronous and they are non blocking. The LiPo MP target can uh, issue other asynchronous operations without blocking. Then the original plugin was uh, pinning and unpinning the uh, host buffers in each uh, transfer. Uh, pinning and unpinning is, um, uh, as we have seen in some uh, traces, uh, is a quite costly uh, operation. And we avoid that because uh, we, in the next gen plugins, we are using the intermediate um, pinet uh, allocations. And we do not need to, to pin and unpin the, the buffers. And finally, another uh, source of the possible improvement is that uh, in the new one, we are using the memory manager for using the, the allocations uh, on the devices. As a conclusion, uh, well, uh, I want to say we have uh, a new design and implementation for LLVM OpenMP uh, plugins for uh, GPU offload. They are now quite easy to extend, at least uh, more e easier than before. Uh, they are the, the common logic and sources are in a common interface. And it should be easier than before to add new plugins because most of the logic is already implemented. Uh, as results, we have seen that uh, the NVIDIA CUDA plugin is uh, still competitive as before. We didn't introduce any overhead uh, for the moment. And we see promising performance improvements uh, in AMD GPU, although we need uh, more testing and more uh, perform performance experiments and, and more analysis. I'm also attaching here the table uh, with the features that we have uh, uh, finally added to the different um, uh, plugins. There is still uh, a not supported uh, feature yet in uh, CUDA uh, plugin, which is the copies with host pinet memory. But uh, we could generalize the implementation of AMD GPU and put it into the common uh, site. 
and make uh, both uh, plugins to use the, the same mechanism for, for doing the two-step uh, copy with uh, host binet memory. So that was all from, from my side. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for coming to this presentation. And if you have any question, please feel free to, to ask or, or send me a mail later as you prefer. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead, Johannes. Good take. No, I, was, I was I was uh, just going to, you know, say uh, this really, you know, he really, uh, Kevin really managed to to get this to a great place and now we're about to merge the AMD GPU plugin, which will be really good for us. And um but before we before we go there, maybe we have some questions. I don't know yeah. if people have questions. Yeah, I have a few questions, if you don't mind. Sure. So first, yeah, really impressive job, and I think it is uh, it is really nice. I mean, it's always better when we have a, a few well uh, organized abstraction. Maybe my first question is why did you go through the HSA route and and not the heap route? Look like in CUDA, it's CUDA driver or CUDA runtime was implemented. Because maybe my 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 first naive when I saw everything you did to implement stream, I was like heap. I guess do exactly the same thing. So why try to to just HSA and not heap? The thing was well originally the the original AMD plugin is already with HSA. And uh, well, uh, we wanted to keep uh, using the same API. It give, uh, I think it give more freedom and give more, um, you can use the uh, optimization of the extensions for AMD, you know? And it doesn't stick to the CUDA, um, to the CUDA world, the CUDA um, um, API, you know? Because HIP is quite uh, similar to CUDA. So it, and I think with HSA we can we could achieve a, a more optimal uh, implementation. So I guess it is my second point is like in, in the abstraction you you define uh, you you use stream, uh, but it doesn't like stream is maybe I mean a stream so in like an in order queue, but it looks like it after it it may cause some problem when you try to use no wait and all this kind of thing, right? So I was curious why you choose to expose stream as an API where stream is really like an NVIDIA, right? In order, like you explain stuff and why you didn't choose to expose maybe more an out of order queue or something like that to your, yeah, exactly to this, yes. to this thing. Yeah, the thing is that um, this, um, this API is already uh, in uh, LLVM OpenMP target. Oh. I don't know for how many times, but I we see. didn't change the API. Oh, uh, I see. So the, 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 here the work was focused only on the plugin side without changing the API between lib OMP target and, and the- Oh, plugin. I see, I see. So the thing is, it, it's true that uh, probably changing lib OMP target uh, uh, and maybe removing the, the concept of a stream, you could uh, go to a different, uh, um, path, as you said, with, uh, well, um, for example, uh, using leveraging the idea of the HSA uh, API, setting the dependencies between the operations directly instead of using the concept of streams. But if we, I think that if we want to change that, we would need to uh, rewrite at least the API and also a part of the LiPo MP target. I see. Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I see. You you were already reusing uh, uh, already set API and just implementing a different backend for this API. Yes. That's it. Okay. Oh, perfect. Thank you for the question. Yeah. Good call. Thank you. Yeah. That's it for me. Thank you very much. And pretty impressive. Also, uh, maybe just a last one. Yeah. Uh, as you know, we are interested with uh, Intel or with uh, Level Zero, who is seem a little similar to HSA. Mm -hmm. So, how hard it can be to to implement a new a new backend 
with your work because you say it's a little <laughs> it is a little easier now so i'm curious to see uh yes uh if i don't remember but the the api for intel the uh, level zero was um a bit more similar to haca i think so probably it shouldn't be very difficult to to implement uh, well to extend and implement a new plugin for for intel now that we have done this abstraction with the streams maybe we could reuse some of the part uh, of the of this stream um, uh, for uh, amd and make it more generic and try to uh, implement uh, the same for for intel gpu but uh, I'm not sure how much difficult it would be. I think that it would be um, quite easier than, than how it was before with the old plugins, because now most of the logic and uh, a lot of common code is already done on the common side, and we don't have to repeat that same code. And we, are, we don't have also to maintain all that code. We have to maintain it once not for every plugin. Exactly, okay. And maybe, can you just give me an idea on the number of line of code? I know it's a bad metric, but just to know if it is like a million line of code or, <laughs> or a few hundred. Uh, oh, few uh, I think it would be similar probably to the AMD GPU, exactly. uh, which is uh, around 2000. Oh, okay. So pretty, uh, pretty dense. Yes. Oh, impressive, impressive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, hey, Kevin, great talk. Thank you very much for, for the overview of the AMD uh, GPU next gen plugin. Um, maybe one question and one comment. Uh, the, the question is, is there any plan or maybe even in place or like whatever for a common um, like going forward for OpenMP T um, support for device side tracing with the next gen plugins? Uh, well, I'm not sure about that. Uh, maybe uh, Johannes can know more about it because I'm not, uh, um, I, I don't know much on, on that side. We are adding things to the next gen plugin right now that kind of um are similar to the uh tracing you're looking for but nobody that i'm aware of outside of amd has really worked on on that part yet so to answer your question there's no plans yet but we would we would be happy to have it okay cool and then maybe one comment with respect to the HSA queues. Yes. Um, so um, maybe you wanna in in if you do more experimentation with that for for default settings, maybe you wanna consider going down to two HSA queues uh, or so. Um, given that, if you think of like having multiple MPI ranks uh, dispatching to the to the device with then all of them having like four or eight queues uh, that kind of put some pressure on the actual hardware queues. And so maybe like starting with a lower number gives you actual uplift with like um, multi-process things per node. Yes, that's a, that's a thing that uh, we can uh, try as a feature or try different uh, lower number of of queues. Yeah, because it's true that in this case, we were running a single uh, process and using a single uh, device. But yeah, in the case there are more than one process, uh, yeah, they will try to allocate uh, more than four the uh, queues per device. That's true. Thank you for, for commenting that. Yeah, otherwise I really enjoyed the, and really uh, enjoyed the talk. Thank you again. Thank you very much. Okay, cool.
Um, again, thanks, Kevin, for giving the talk a second time around. This time, where more people can attend. No, last time was uh, schedule was problematic, but thanks for doing this again. Um, I mean, I'm I'm personally looking forward to upstreaming of the AMD plugin, mm -hmm. and if there's you know uh, the Intel plugin that. Uh, Thomas mentioned is certainly something we would like to have, and we might actually put some effort in. Let's see how things go. Um, yeah. Uh, will recording of this talk be available? Yes, uh, we are recording and we'll send it over the Slack channels after the day. Sounds good. Okay. So, so thank uh, you very much for for attending. Yeah, maybe a, um, a last uh, comment. Yeah, yes, I get I developed some some tests quickly to do to test some asynchronicity and to check if everything is asynchronous, run in parallel, and all this kind of thing. If we want, I can share it with you so we can compare. Uh, um, because yeah, I was working on mini MC2, and uh, so mm -hmm. I see what they are doing. So I developed kind of a really some micro benchmark, right? Where you use no weight or multi multiple par parallel OS thread to do some asynchronicity, okay. you know, all this kind of thing. So it would be interesting to you if you can run this those tests with with your new backend and see the the difference. I think it will uh, it would be interesting to see. Yeah, sure. We can. Uh, well, I can send you a Slack message later. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, I can try with the new, the new backend. Thank you okay. very much. Yeah. yeah, no problem, no problem. Thank you.